excuse me, the uh, start of the drone assignment. So that way, as you're rendering your stuff out, you can start working on the drone. Um, this assignment will be pretty much our last big assignment. We'll have a demo reel, which is all of our assignments put together into one video. It's a pretty quick thing. Typically, it takes people 15, 20 minutes to do. <clears throat> so you can do that like pretty much in class. Uh, and then we'll also have a final exam in here, which will be on the 5th of December. <clears throat> so that's why this is going to be due on the 3rd of December. Um, the drone is more advanced hard surface modeling. We'll be mirroring and sectioning sectional modeling of a drone using cloners to replicate parts, basic UV manipulation. Uh, we'll be preparing it for uh, exporting the key shot, which I showed last class uh, or the class before, and then rendering an animation and still from key shot. Um, one of the biggest things in industry for rendering stuff out is um, these external programs for rendering things. Um, Keyshot is one of them I mentioned before. It's a fantastic program because it literally is, you can drag and drop stuff on there and it gives you a pretty realistic uh, view of your stuff before you do a final render. Um, there's another one called VRED. <clears throat> Autodesk makes VRED, so you can download VRED for free. You can download Keyshot for like a 15 day trial for free. There might be limitations to it um, or watermarks. Um, VRED is much more advanced. Uh, Keyshot is a few hundred dollar program. VRED is a $25,000 program. So um, very few companies use VRED just because of the cost. Um, even some of the bigger companies that have been using it are switching over to Keyshot. Um, so it definitely is something you want to be aware of as to how this works. Uh, so far we've been rendering everything inside of Cinema itself, uh, which is definitely an option uh, for doing some stuff. Uh, we've chosen before the standard of the physical render. <clears throat> You'll see they have this pro render in there, which is a, it, the pro render is basically like a simulating of key shot right inside of, of cinema. Uh, but there's other renderers too. Um, there's Octane, which is, let's see, Lordy, which is a rendering engine that you can install and put inside of key sh or inside of cinema and render right inside of cinema. More realistic stuff. Uh, these are some of the renders from Octane. <clears throat> there's uh, RenderMan for Cinema 4D. There's Arnold for Cinema 4D. The idea is not to um, overwhelm yourself with trying to learn every single one of these, but being able to just get out of these render engines um, something that looks cool uh, and something that obviously gets the point across as to what you're trying to do. Okay. Um, but for this one, we're going to do KeyShot just so you can see how that whole thing plays out. <clears throat> You'll turn in your final scene, your texture, movie, and a still image. Uh, the movie will be a six second movie of the drone. It'll be on the ground, it'll power up, <clears throat> and then it'll lift off. So that'll be our whole movie, six seconds. So our drone has to start on the ground. So there has to be some way that we have feet or something holding it there. Uh, the propellers have to be visible so we can see the propellers spinning, and then it'll take off. Um, we'll also do a still, nice close angle of the still, real close uh, angle of the drone. Um, 960 by 540 for the movie, 3000 by 2400 for the still image. And this is 14 points, okay? Um, like I mentioned before, you are able to design your own drone, but just keep in mind um, the amount of time we have left, <clears throat> the complexity of it, the skills that we have, blah, blah, blah. All those things go into effect. So do the base and then you can always add stuff on top of it okay um, i'm also going to throw in there <clears throat> we're using cinema 4d to model this um, the same techniques we're using in cinema go across to maya or any other 3d program um, i'm finding a lot more in the industry that they are kind of modeling in this program and then bringing it into that one even at, at uh, smaller and bigger places are all over the place um, if you wanted to get into more of realistic looking stuff so like as we're modeling the products we have to be we're pushing and pulling polygons or so moving things around if we want a hole we have to shape the polygons and then extrude and push it down uh, one of the software that a lot of the artists are using is this program called fusion um, and the way that fusion works is it's more of a cad based software um, but it allows you basically to draw a shape like these screws here they basically had a cube they drew a circle and then they just pushed that in and it created it. They didn't have to reshape anything and then you can put bevels and stuff on it. So it is a really nice program. 
creates different kind of geometry. There's a different learning curve, different stuff set up. Um, so if you really want to get into modeling, like this is something that people want to do is model stuff like this kind of stuff. Um, Fusion would be a good program to learn. If you just like animation, <clears throat> Fusion has some animation stuff, but nowhere near what you would need for actual animation. If you want to do rendering, same thing. Fusion is very limited for rendering. You would take it into Keyshot or take it into Cinema or Mai or something else. <clears throat> okay, so just I want to throw that out there just so you can see it. Um, so to start off my drone, I duplicated my template folder, called it drone, and I'm going to start building it. Um, I have some ideas in my head, some stuff I sketched out as to what I want my drone to look like. Um, the concepts should be pretty universal across pretty much any vehicle you're ever going to model. It's just a matter of applying it to your specific item. So anytime I do something, I look for symmetry. I look for what parts are going to be the same so that I don't have to model this side and this side and that side and whatever. So I'm going to start off with a cube and I'm going to divide this into sections like so. Now <clears throat> for the drone that I'm going to show, um, I'm going to uh, model it with four wings in this case because some of you may have four wings. The process is the same for two, you just modify it a bit. Okay. Um, I'm going to get it to a, a general size of what that center part of my drone looks like, just so you can see what I'm kind of basing this off of. Is something like this right here. This is a DJI Phantom. So there's a center part, that's what I'm kind of modeling there. And then I'm going to have these um, wings that will pull out of that. So this is the center of that drone center area. I'm going to hit C on it, and then I'm just going to delete um, everything that is going to be duplicated. So all of, oops, let me hit tolerant on. All of this stuff will be deleted. <clears throat> all of that stuff will be deleted. And if we look at this from a side view, <clears throat> You can even type in like side view and stuff and you'll pull stuff up. Um, I guess that one works good. This is pretty much symmetrical from the top to the bottom. There are some modifications, but pretty much it's symmetrical. So I could again just kind of delete this as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to model this chunk and then I'll be able to mirror it underneath, mirror it to the left and mirror it to the back and create all of these pieces all at once. Now, in order to do this, I have to make sure that all of my stuff is perfectly lined up, okay? So as I mirror this thing, let me grab uh, one of these faces. Um, I never want to pull this face away from that center line because as I do that, my mirroring line is now gone, okay? So where I just broke that, I never want to touch any of those edges to move it away from where that's going to be mirrored. If I do, it's not a big deal later. I just have to be aware of it so that it mirrors correctly. Okay. Uh, same thing here. I don't want. I can pull it this way. That's not a big deal. Uh, but I wouldn't want to pull it away from that red line uh, or above that red line because now it's going to be not mirrored correctly. If I go to my points, I can grab these points in the middle here and move those wherever I want, um, as long as I don't move them up because again, that would ruin it. Um, eventually, I will move them a different direction, but for now, that's where they're going to stay. Uh, so I'm going to go and insert uh, an edge loop here and there. Okay, and then I'm going to take these faces <clears throat> and I'm going to extrude them and I'm going to click and drag. Now this is going to be um, this. Orthographic views. Nope, they don't want that. Top view. There we go. Uh, so this is, I'm pulling out this wing right here. Okay, that's what I did. I just, I'm extruding this out uh, right here. Okay. Uh, now I don't want it to be that thick. I basically want to keep that same thickness and go that same distance along there. Um, but I'll adjust it. So some things I may need to do, if I don't have preserved groups on, you'll see how it splits that into two separate pieces. Depending on your options, you may have this on or off. Just be aware that that is something you need to uh, have checked or not checked. Also, if this preserved groups is on, this maximum angle will tell it how far apart those groups should be. 
uh, or what angle it should look for. If this is at 90, you see even though it's click, they're still separated. Once that's at 91, then it realizes, okay, these should be together, all right? So the idea is that those are all one piece. Cool. Uh, then I'm going to grab my edges, and I'm just going to start moving stuff. Um, I'm going to move this here. I'm going to grab this one, move that there. There we go. Okay, so there's like part of my wings. This will be mirrored eventually, so these bottom faces, I need to delete those. Okay, so I'm just creating that shell that will eventually be flipped underneath and so on. I'm going to grab my faces again. I'm going to extrude again, <clears throat> pull it out. Sometimes you'll see me extrude, let go of the extrude, and then just use the regular move tools to move it where I want it. Okay, I'll do that quite often actually. Um, we have to worry about the surface flow of our stuff. So as I get to, let me view this so we can see it. As I get down here, you can see that these lines are pretty straight where those red things are. If I look at the lines here, you can see we have this big jagged like corner. Uh, those need to be straightened, okay? So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna switch to my actual top view, and I'm gonna bring this pretty much straight across. And I may need to do my marquee, so I grab both sides of this and line that up. And then I'll take this and line that up. There we go. And I'm going to pull this one over a little bit more, pull this one over a little bit more like this. And I'm going to start getting it ready for that opening. So I'm trying to create this like arm that comes out and then bulges out at the end to support where that motor is going to be. So I grab those faces again. Again, these bottom ones will be gone. Okay. So it doesn't matter when I delete them. They just have to be deleted at some point um, before I mirror. So I'm going to extrude again, lots of extrusions. I'm going to switch back to my top view. I'm going to go and grab the points here, pull these in like that, grab these ones, pull these in like that. Oops. And I'll use this uh, space bar to toggle between my marquee selection um, and any of my tools I may need, like the move tool. So as I marquee, I'm in this, but then I'll tap the space bar to get back to the move tool. Okay. Now eventually I want that to be perfectly round so that when I put a cylinder on it, it has a nice little perimeter that goes around it. You'll find that one of the tricks to modeling anything that we want to look realistic is having a mixture of smooth surfaces and crisp surfaces. My coffee cup here has smooth surfaces obviously that go around this, but on the lip part, there's a very sharp corner right there and a very sharp corner right there. So being able to control that so it doesn't look all blobby or all crisp that's what we want, okay? So um, I'm going to drop in a cylinder, and this is just placeholder for now. I'm dropping in a cylinder, and I'm going to slide it over here and slide it down there and kind of get this lined up pretty much right with the center of that thing, okay? Now, what will this look like when it smooths out? It's going to be really rough at this moment, pretty rough. Uh, eventually, it'll have a subdivision surface on it that'll smooth the whole thing out. So let's put one on there. And now let's switch back to this top view. That doesn't want to show us a whole lot. Let's switch to this view. So that's pretty close. You can see here it's a little bit further away. Here it's a little bit too close. Here it's pretty close. There it's further away. So uh, I'm going to turn my subdivision off, go back to the cube, and then just start grabbing some points and moving them. So I'm just pulling these maybe a little bit further away here and here. I'm going to grab these points and pull these back a little bit. Again, trying to create that nice cylinder shape. Um, a quick way to do this so that it is like more accurate. <clears throat> if I go to my cylinder and I take the segments here in the rot in the uh, around it, and I make them the same amount: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, Radius is that, that's that. Okay. I don't need caps on this. All right, then I'm going to hit C. There it goes. Uh, now I can see perfectly these is, this is where those points should be. Okay, so I'm going to take that cylinder and just make it a tad bit bigger. Like that. Go to my cube shape. Maybe I'll rotate this a little bit too. It's lined up a little bit better. Now go to my cube shape, go to the points, 
and just line up these points with the ones that are on there. And now I pretty much know that when I go through and actually smooth it out, <clears throat> that it'll give me a pretty round shape uh, because these points are consistently placed. <clears throat> if some points are too close to each other, like if these points are way over here, it's not going to be round. If they're too much in the middle or too far out, it won't be round. So this will give me a pretty uh, quick way to get this nice and smooth. So now when I smooth it, it's still going to look chunky and weird, but I'll fix that in a minute. Okay, so that looks as round as we're going to get it at the moment. All right, so I can delete that cylinder. I don't need it anymore. <clears throat> um, I don't like it. looks like it's twisted maybe a little bit. It might just be this point in the middle. Maybe I'll just move that point over. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, that point really didn't matter, you know, for this demonstration where that was. All right, so there's the gist of that wing. There's the gist of that arm coming out of it. When I subdivide it, it does this. <clears throat> so that's obviously not something that I want. <clears throat> I'm just going to have that throughout the entire lecture. Uh, I'm going to go to my edge loop splitting tool, and I'm just going to put in an edge loop right here, a knife loop. And by putting it right here, when I go through and actually smooth this out, you'll see how it crimps that a little bit tighter. So that edge, if I go to before, You'll see how it keeps this smoothness that comes in here and rounds off there. When I drop this edge in really close, you'll see how it tightens it up a little bit. Okay, so now we have more of this like straight line and then it turns into that. If I want to accentuate that a bit more, I'll go back to my subdivision off and you'll see I constantly bounce between having the subdivision on, having the subdivision off. Uh, I'm gonna grab the, uh, I'm gonna undo that Turn the subdivision off. I'm going to grab all the points here. Come on, there we go. And I'm going to scale this up. Okay, and I'm scaling it uniformly so that, um, not uniform, but in this direction, so that this is a bit bigger. And I'm going to create a bit of contrast between the shape of the uh, drone, the arm that comes out, and the shape of that motor area. That might be too big. Let me shrink that. I might be back to exactly where I was, but that's fine. All right, so I'm going to put uh, a knife loop in here. I'm gonna put it right there. <clears throat> I'm going to put one way back here by the start of this. And then this one that I come into the middle, if you look at it, you can see that it's going to kind of blend between the two shapes. Like here it's facing that way because that's how that one's facing. Here it's facing this way, but right in the middle-ish, it's about pretty straight. So I'm going to go to where it's about pretty straight. And then I'm going to go to my um, scale tool, or my selection tool, and grab all this. And then I'm going to scale it down in these two directions. Now, as I scale it, as I move it, as I'm doing all this stuff, I'm very aware that I'm not scaling it in this direction because it takes it away from that bottom line. Okay, So I'm always scaling it just in those two directions so that it doesn't do that. So now when I subdivide this, we should get more of a uh, contrast. I think I want that a bit more contrasty, so I'll adjust it more, but that's pretty good. Uh, let me go to my edges. Let me grab this edge here, and I think I want to scale that one down too. So I'm going to grab this green corner piece and scale that down. And I think I'm also going to grab these two edges here if I can. I may have to go inside. Yes, there we go, this and this. And I'm just going to move those down and then subdivide it again and see where I'm at. Okay, so that's pretty good. I like how that comes in and then we have this like rounded shape right there. Um, I need this to be more of a platform. So if you look at <clears throat> how this is set up, uh, the arm comes out, there's that bulbous shape the motor sits inside there. So there's like a cutout and the motor piece would actually sit inside that. And then wires run from here all the way to where, you know, the battery and all the controllers are. So I'm going to go to my cube. Oops. I'm going to go to my faces. I'm going to grab these and I'm just going to do an extrude inner, which is MW. And then I'm going to extrude regular and push it down. If I have create caps on, again, just pay attention to your settings. Uh, it'll cover it up. I don't want create caps on, obviously. I want that to be open. All right, so that's pretty good there. 
Uh, this may come down further later, but right now it's fine. That, that. Okay, delete those bottom faces. Cool. Now when I subdivide, you see I have this kind of carriage area for where that motor could sit. Uh, this here, I think I still want that to be a little bit more tapered. Let's go to scale. Let's grab the edges. Scale that in more. There we go. So now we have this body right here. It's going to be kind of chunky, thin arm, and then this really thick uh, motory area. All right, so I'm going to pretend that I'm happy with the way that looks. I still want to tweak some stuff eventually, but for now it's good. Um, I'm going to pull it out of the subdivision because I'm done with that, and I'm going to delete it. Now I'm going to start the mirroring process because at some point I want to see what does this look like when it is all put together. And one of the great things about cinema is that you can do that pretty quickly. Um, when I'm in Maya here, if I were to do this, it only lets me do basically like one shape at a time and it's not easy to turn it on and off. So it's, it's not very good for doing um, that kind of thing. But in cinema, it's set up actually pretty neatly where it works pretty well. Um, I want to fix that. That's a little bit too high here. Let's go over here. Bring that. I'll push that down some. I think even maybe I'm going to grab these points and just scale those in. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm going to make sure uh, that everything is squared off. So I'm going to go on my top view. I'm going to make sure this line rides right along that edge. It does. I can see perfectly that it's right along that red. This line rides right along this. I'm going to switch to another view, make sure that the bottom is perfectly along that, make sure that's perfectly there, cool. And just for triple checking, I'll go into this view and still everything is good. Uh, if it's not good, I just need to move it. So let's pretend for an instant that this point is way over here, okay? So I can see that this edge comes out, it goes here, and then it should come back. So I'm going to grab this point. I'm going to turn on my snapping. So I'm turning on my enable snap, work plane, grid, and grid line. And now when I move this, it'll snap right to that grid line. Perfect. So now it's all straight. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to go to um, this middle one here, and there's a mirror or a symmetry. So I'm going to hold down Alt and click on it. And you'll see that it automatically symmetrizes it. Um, I'm going to choose the direction. I don't want to do that one first. I want to do the bottom first. So I'm going to um, do I want the bottom first. Yes, I do. That there we go. So I just switched the mirror plane. I don't know which one it is exactly. So I just kind of go through the list. There it is. Uh, I verify that everything is lined up perfectly. It is. I can see the edge looks uh, exactly where it should be. If you were to do something like move the pivot, it won't. Here's my uh, item. My pivot is still centered right there. If my pivot were to move way down here, and then I added my symmetry. I lied. Uh -huh. <laughs> sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Let's try that again. Try this. This symmetry. There it goes. Uh, that time I didn't do it. <clears throat> so uh, just be aware that where your pivot is will definitely play a role in that. So if you mess up and your pivot's in the wrong spot, you can again just hit L and use the snapping tools to snap it so it's lined up perfectly with that corner. And then symmetry, drop it into that. There we go. Okay, so there's my one symmetry. Now I can drop another symmetry on top of this, and then drop another symmetry on top of that, and then just choose a different direction. Nope. There it goes. And so now, very quickly, I can see this is what my drone is going to look like when it's all put together. And if I go into this symmetry and do a subdivision on it, now I can see what the whole thing is going to look like as it comes together. And as I'm editing this, all I have to do is edit this one shape, and it'll edit all those other pieces. So if I look at this, I can see there's definitely some kind of weird like 
spot right here that I'm not liking. It's coming from this, where this is going straight, and then it's pretty drastic of a change. So I'm going to go into my uh, edges here and just move this a little bit further away. Oops, make sure I'm not in my pivot tool. There we go. And you'll see that as I move that away, that smooths out that area. And I'll do the same thing here. Click this. Just adjust where that is at. And that'll create a nice smooth transition from one spot to the other. Um, I'm also going to go into um, these faces here and probably pull these up some. Okay, and again, you're able to see it like as it's updating. Uh, a little bit more of a transition, so maybe these edges will come up a little bit more. Maybe this point will come down a little bit. Don't be afraid to move a point and then just see what happens. Okay. Now, these edge ones, just like before, I can't pull them away. If I pull them away, it'll actually open up the surface there, which is obviously not something we want to do. Um, I'm going to push it in. That's cool. All right. This is looking like really chunky. That's like way too much. <laughs> Let's push that back down some. Oops. Uh, I'm going to go to my extrude inner. and extrude this inward. Uh, as I do that, you see I get these like extra faces here. That's not a big deal, uh, but it's really screwing up the flow of the points. <clears throat> um, I don't want to have this because now if I turn on my shading, now I have these basically these like extrusions at each spot, which are going to basically create like these lumpy parts. Okay, So you want to be careful of how you extrude stuff because it'll do exactly that kind of thing. Uh, what I'm going to do is use my knife um, line cut. Oh, let me see what the loop does. It's going to go that way. It's going to go that way. Yeah, I think I'll use my loop cut, like maybe right here and right here. That might work. And then I'm just going to adjust some of these points. So I'll pull these points out a bit further. Let's go this way. Let's go that way this way. So I'm just uh, adjusting where these points are at just to give me a little bit more room so that I can um, just lift these front faces, these middle faces up. There we go. So now I can pull this up some like that. That looks better. Uh, then I'll do a regular extrude and pull it up. And we turn on my subdivision again. Uh, we'll notice something kind of weird happening here. We should have a nice smooth flow of divisions from one side to the other, but we're ending up with this little star. Every time you extrude inside Cinema, uh, it keeps faces where the edges are at. Okay, It's not just Cinema, but other programs. So along this edge here, let me turn off all my symmetries and subdivisions. Along these edges here, it's keeping those faces. It doesn't know how to symmetry them because they're like basically faces touching each other. So we just have to go through. I turn off all my X's. Oops, I don't delete everything. Holy cow. Let's try that again. Click, 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 click. There we go. And delete. And now I turn these back on. And now I have a nice smooth flow of faces from one side to the other. Now at some point, I may not want the bottom and the top to be doing the exact same thing. I may say, OK, well, I'm satisfied with the way the top is or the bottom is. I really need to separate those so that I can do uh, whatever I want to it. Um, so I'm going to go and hit, like this is the bottom one. That's why the bottom one was first. I'm going to hit C on this bottom one. So that way this shape is basically one wing, okay, or one quarter of it. Now whatever I do to this one will just duplicate to all the other ones. So if I don't want this chunky leg here, that looks really weird. Uh, I'm going to go into my edges. I'm going to double click. I'm going to scale it down. That looks better. Um, I'm going to double click this one. I'm going to scale that down. I'm going to grab all the points for this. There we go. Like that. And I'm going to move the whole thing down. I'll deselect these, move that down. There we go. Eh, maybe up would be better. Let's try that. Yeah, that looks cooler. 
That way they're not touching the ground when we take off and I have more room for my propellers. Okay, now if I turn my points on and off, or my lines on and off, it really gives me an idea of what's happening with the surface. Um, so things like this, where it's dipping in, I wanna correct that, because that looks stupid. Um, a lot of times you're not gonna know exactly what to move, but you just kinda go into that area and you just start tweaking stuff, and eventually you'll figure out like, oh, this is where that weird glitch is coming from. Um, also, obviously moving things the wrong way could cause it to look really funky. Push this that way. Let me go to my points. I'm sure there's a point that's like right there inside. Yep. So there's just one point that was on the inside that was causing that like pinching on the inside. So I just kind of pulled it up a little bit. Maybe pull it over a little bit. So now that looks nice and smooth. Um, I'm keeping in mind how big this is. When I add my propellers, the propellers can't intersect each other, right? So this propeller here. The motor will be there, the propeller will come to right about that center line. So if I wanted this to be, let's say, bigger, I would grab all the points, pull it really far back. And now I have a lot more room for that propeller to be a lot bigger. Okay, if I wanted smaller propellers, bring it here. Bigger ones, there. Okay, and this is the benefit of being able to work in this mode because we can see the whole thing as, like, pretty much live. Uh, if I don't like something like on the bottom of this, I really don't like how this is laid out. So now that they're all separated, I can grab these points and let me grow the selection a little bit. Let me turn all this up off so you can see it. Uh, I guess I don't need to grow it. I'll just scale it down there we go, and then move it down. There we go, like that. And this might be one of my legs, like how it sits on the ground. I might just have uh, these four things just kind of come in and just that's what's resting on the ground. That might be a neat way to do it. All right, so maybe I'll scale that down, pull it down, turn my stuff back on here. Yeah, that could be cool. As you're modeling stuff, obviously you want to have some sort of idea where you're going, but don't let your uh, imagination be limited to only what was on your paper. Um, it doesn't hurt to kind of go through it and just like, what will this look like? Even if you were to, and this is another great thing about cinema, even if you were just to duplicate this whole branch, do something on one of these, try it out and see if it works. If it doesn't work, all you do is delete it and you go back to what you had. Or if it does work, you can throw these on a layer and hide it for layer later. Um, cool. So now I'm going to go to my edges. I'm going to double click this. I think this could probably use a... Um, bevel on here just to tighten this up. Maybe another division. I'm going to drop a bevel on this. There we go. All right, that looks a little bit sharp right there. Let's undo that bevel. I think I may need to just pull these faces up more. There we go. And then grab this outer one. See if that fixes it. Nope, it still looks bad. Right. And that's basically just the transition from one spot to the other spot is why we're getting that. So it doesn't like how it's transitioning from here into that. And so we're getting these like weird pinching points. Um, if I grab, oops. There we go. If I grab this point and I kind of bring it a bit closer to that edge, I bring this one maybe a bit closer to that one, this one a bit closer to that one. Um, it'll give us a better result when we do that bevel. Because a lot of the time, it just doesn't like those transitions from one, um, from a square shape into this rounded shape. That may need to come out some too. So let's see if that works, uh, and then we'll play with the other ones if we need to. Turn these back on. Nope, it still doesn't like it. All right, so let's try something else then. Uh, let's go to the cube. Let's go to edges. Maybe instead of um, a bevel, maybe I'll do an edge loop right along this edge here, that edge there edge here, and this edge here, and that edge there. 
okay? So anywhere there's a sharp angle, I'll put an edge loop, and that way when it does smooth out, you see it creates a much nicer uh, version of it. There's no bevel there, it's just a nice crisp edge. Okay, those are a little bit too straight and pointy for me, so I think I want to maybe put in, oops, uh, an edge loop here. Just drop a couple of these in. And I'm gonna go to the top view. And I'm just gonna pull it kind of down this middle line. Uh, I'm using the middle of this circle as how I'm dragging it back. So I'm pulling it back to this. Then I'm going to grab the next row, pull that back some. I think I need to be a bit more drastic. Let's go here. Pull that way too far back like that. There we go. And this will come a little bit further. Maybe this will come a little bit further down. And a little bit further. So you'll see when you get into this modeling, it's just a matter of understanding those basic things of adding divisions, extruding, beveling, and then it's just kind of like what do you want it to look like. There you go. So that's kind of like a hook now instead of just coming straight down. There you go. Now I think in this case, I don't want these to either be to be that round too. Like I said, having contrast, having a variety of smooth and hard edges uh, really helps your stuff come across well. Um, so I'm gonna grab two of these edges here, like maybe these two. Probably two there. And I'm gonna go to my scale tool. And I'm just gonna scale them together. All right, scaling's not working. It's kind of distorting it some, so let me undo that. Uh, I'm just going to move this edge closer to that one and grab these. I move this edge closer to that one. Uh, I think, let me see. I might be, if I grab a point here, slide. Yep, so I'm going to use this slide uh, value instead. Let me undo these. Not liking how that's turning out either. If I grab this point, here, I right click and go to slide. Um, I can slide this point further down. So that way it's basically just getting it closer to that other edge. And what this is gonna do is just like I did the, um, the edge loops at the top, this will tighten up that corner right there and it'll create basically like a hard, corn, a hard uh, pinch. So it should look pretty cool. You know, see, I'm bringing all these in. I'm making sure that all my edges are flowing nicely, uh, coming down. All right, so now let's subdivide it. And there. Now we have this more of like a sharp edge right on the inside versus um, the smooth part that we had a second ago. So maybe I'll do that on the outside too. I'll go here and maybe smooth these ones so they go further out. Think of it like you're playing with clay, but we have to be a bit more precise with it. Um, you're just kind of like seeing where the shapes are going to take you. I'm gonna come up here a little bit more and pull this over, pull that over. All right, so let's see what that looks like. All right, that's cool. So now we have these uh, hard edges here and then some softness. That's cool. Now I could have also, let's say these didn't work out. I can delete those faces and just make a new shape, a brand new shape that would come down. You don't have to build everything off of the same shape. You can add other stuff to it. Um, like when we do the motors, that'll all be a separate shape. Um, so let's say for instance, I don't like this bottom piece that looks kind of weird there. I want to just eliminate all this stuff. So I'm going to turn my subdivision off and for simplicity, I'm going to turn off my um, symmetries and I'm going to delete all the faces that are under here, okay? Now, I typically, I actually don't need to delete the faces for this, but I'm going to just so you can see that process. I'm going to try to also frame this so I can see my stuff. There it is. 
Um, I'm going to go to my selection. I'm going to grab all the faces and just delete them. Okay, so now I have a hole there. There's a hole. So now I'm going to fill this back in. I always want to keep quads. I always want to keep the edges flowing correctly. So as I add an edge loop, you can see how these are all flowing nicely from one to the other. I want to make sure that continues. So uh, I'm going to go to my edges, and I'm going to click here, 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 and here. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to try Bridge. Bridge is a tool that lets me just connect edges together. We'll see if it works. So this to that. That worked. And then this to that, and that worked. Okay. So now that worked. And then um, if I go to my edge loop, you can see that it works here. But when I get to this, it just stops. It doesn't know what to do at this point. Okay. Same thing here. It doesn't know what to do. Um, I also, if I turn everything back on, you'll see I still have a hole here because this corner is no longer connected to that center point. So I'm going to go into my knife tool. And I'm just using the regular um, knife line cut. <clears throat> and I'm going to add an edge, um, a point here and a point there. And then what that does is it gives me, let me click off, uh, it gives me four sides right here for that face, four sides right here, and this face also has four sides. So it should give me some nice uh, edge flow. Now I'll need to go into my uh, bottom view top view, whatever. Make sure those are off, yes. Oh, I'm on the wrong side. That's why it didn't look right. There it is. I'm going to grab that uh, point, and I'm just going to move it over this way. Make sure my snap is on, and this way. Come on. There we go. And then grab this point, and then just move that so it's lined up as well. So now I have this nice flow. If I go back to my edge loop, you see nice edge loop here, nice edge loop there. Okay, everywhere is nice edge loops. Turn it all back on. Now we have a nice flattened out bottom here. Okay, and the same thing for the top. Oops. If I didn't like the top, again, I could rework that. Um, this is typically how I would do, like if I wanted to eliminate this, um, I would just go to my edges. Come on. Click on the right piece, that'll help. I'll dissolve this, and then I can just take this face and just move it down. So that's the quicker way to do something like that, but sometimes you need to delete the faces and basically rebuild them. Cool. All right, so I'm liking the way that's turning out. Um, I'm gonna go here, and I'm just gonna extrude this down some though. I think I wanna put like a cockpit in there, like. Instead of a drone that you would fly, put a camera on, maybe this is a drone that's piloted and there's a little pilot that would sit inside it. Uh, so I'm going to grab these, this, this. Uh, I'm going to extrude and I'm just going to push this down. Come on, there you go. Uh, there's those extra faces there, so I can just delete those. Uh, if I smooth it, You'll see what that looks like. <clears throat> I need that to be a bit crisper. So back to edge loop. Um, I want to find one that goes around that edge. So inside, perfectly, goes around that edge I just put in there. Same thing here, nice. And so now when I do this, I get a nice crisp edge running all the way around it. Now the cockpit is going to sit on top of it. So I don't know if you guys know what the Jetsons are. Yes, OK. Uh, so it's going to be like a bubble top. Jetsons. like this. So it'll just be like this little bubble top that would sit up there. It'll be a little bit more advanced, whatever. Um, so I'm going to create a sphere. I'm going to pull it up here. I'm going to turn my snap off because it's snapping. I'm going to scale it. There we go. Mm, maybe I want this to be a bit flatter. So let's grab the sphere. Let's take the divisions down. Everything you model, keep it low because it's a lot easier to push and pull points when you don't have uh, as many points as we have here, right? If I was to try to m modify anything on this, it'd be very tricky because there's so many points. It's much easier when we're dealing with just these few points like that. Even the sphere, I keep that pretty low as well. Uh, so I'm going to say, let's say 12 here is a good number. Um, I don't like the poking spot on the top of this, so I'm going to go through this list until I find one that I'm happy with. I like that one, the hexadron. 
Uh, not that one, not that one, and not that one. So hexadron it is. And I'm going to hit C on it. I'm going to grab the faces and delete it. I'm going to grab the scale tool and just scale it down a bit and drop that into place. Now, you can see I have a gap right there, right there, that needs to be adjusted. If I go to my uh, cube, I switch views. Maybe I'll shade this one so I can see it. There it is. I'll go to my points, and I'll just adjust my points until that fits nice and cozy. This one could probably come out a little bit more. Good. Maybe these both want to come up a little bit. Yep, that seems to work good there. Okay. So I'll pull that up a tiny bit. And I'm going to give this a little bit of thickness. So I'm going to solo it just so we can see that one piece. And I'm just going to go to my faces, grab all the faces, uh, extrude it push it in, but also do the create caps. That way it has some thickness. That way if we had this as glass, which probably will be, um, the glass will have thickness to it, so it'll look nice. Um, if I were to smooth this out, which eventually it will be, it may round off a little bit too much on the bottom, and so it's kind of soft. Uh, edge loops or bevels or something, just to hold that edge some. Let's go there. Sometimes it doesn't want to work like the angle that you're hitting it, so you just kind of move around, get closer, get further away, whatever you have to do to get that. Or just deselect and then reselect and then try it again. There we go. All right, so now when I smooth that out, um, that bottom is going to have a much crisper, flatter bottom than it did a minute ago. All right, so now I've turned my solo off. Good. I don't like this bump that's in here, so let me jump back to this. You'll see this as a constant thing that you're always just kind of like, oh, I need to adjust this or that or whatever. So you're constantly going to be bouncing around, adjusting things that you just don't feel are looking good. There we go. And this is one of the, again, the nice thing about having the um, other views is I can adjust it on the right while I look at it on the left. That's all right. I think I need to adjust maybe the positioning of these. Uh, if you have points that are too close to each other, you'll get you'll get a hard area where you don't want a hard area. Like I want it to be nice and smooth. So this has to probably come over a little bit and up a little bit. And then this has to be scooted over a little bit and up a little bit. All right, let's see what that looks like. All right, much nicer than it did a second ago. Okay. Uh, maybe I want to take this point right here and just pull that up some. Take that point, pull that up some. That's the wrong point. Right there. Yep, there we go. All right. Now, if this is um, if this is a spaceship plastic thing. <clears throat> like this, uh, can I get in closer? I did. Come on. Uh, you can kind of see it right there along the edge. There's this little seam that goes around. Basically, they made two pieces of plastic and they snap together. Uh, in a real life vehicle, they're not like that. Um, there's a lot more seams in different spots. But for this one, let's say I wanted to add a seam that would run along this entire thing. I'm going to add my edge loop, and it's going to basically run along here. So I'm just going to go right there. And then I'm going to grab the faces along this. So I'm going to go to select loop. That selects all the faces around this entire thing. Again, another reason to have clean geometry so we get that effect. Then I'm going to go to extrude. Let me turn my subdivision off. And I'm going to extrude this inward and turn my caps off. There we go. Okay. So now I have basically this little seam 
uh, right there down the middle of my ship. It creates these little faces right at the edges, so I'm going to delete those. There's one on the other side. There we go. Uh, I'm going to turn my subdivision back on. I'm going to verify that everything looks nice and smooth. That looks good. Oops, we have a weird little pinch here. You can see there's a X there. That's what's going on. Uh, let's go in here and see why that's doing that. Uh, if I switch to my top view, I switch this back to lines. Which one am I editing? This one. There it is. I'm just going to verify that nothing is sticking over or under. There it is. So this point should be right on that line. So that point, as I extruded, didn't go uh, over the line. So I have to make sure it's snapped right to that. There we go. And I'll double check the other side too, just to verify that that is perfectly lined up. Right. This one's good. The other one obviously wasn't. If I turn my stuff back on, I no longer get that pinch. So now it looks like there's two pieces of plastic that kind of came together. And just to help seal that deal a little bit better, I think I need a little bevel that goes around it. So I'm going to go to my edges and here, here. And notice how I'm doing this after I'm done with pretty much all my base modeling on the rest of it. So I'm just double clicking all those edges Trying to grab the other one, not liking it. There it is. So I grabbed all the way around all four of those edges. <clears throat> I'm going to get in pretty close. I'm going to do my bevel and just add a tiny bit of a bevel here, like uh, 0 0.05. So now when it gets smooth, oops, wrong smooth there. It looks a little bit crisper. Now I do have some chunkiness here. Um, I'll probably undo my bevel so I can straighten out that chunkiness. Don't be afraid to undo stuff because it's a lot easier to undo it than try to work with that mess that I just created and fix it. That. Yep. So I just have to go through and smooth out that transition so I don't get that weird bubble that I was getting on the other side. Yeah, you can really see it right here. Okay, you can see how it's kind of like bumped right there. That looks odd. So I'll fix that. Okay. Um, also, if there's any areas that you may want to add um, details to at some point, um, let's say like these bands here, um, those bands I would do as a texture, um, but these vents here, um, I could do them as a texture or I could do them as an actual piece of geometry. Same thing with the vents underneath. Um, same thing with any of the details. Look at what can be done with texture. Look at what can be done with uh, modeling. Uh, nothing right there. Let's wait. It knows what I want. So same thing here. These stripes you could use as uh, textures. Obviously, the label there would be a texture. Um, these little things that are on the side here, those, I don't know if they look like little clips or something. So those pieces I may want to just extrude out of that. Um, at some point, we may extrude it out of the lower res version like this, or we may actually smooth it and extrude things out of there. So like the vents, I wouldn't try to extrude the vents out of this because there's not enough points to extrude it. I would wait until I got more divisions on it, then extrude the vents. Okay, we're not there yet, so you just ignore that. Uh, but let's say I wanted that little um, spot on the other side. Let me flip to this side. I would just isolate those faces. I do that all the time. This. I would extrude inner, extrude out. And now I have these little, like, whatever those are on the side. And then just to crimp it up a little bit, a little bit of edge looping right here and right there. So now that looks nice and crisp going around it. Um, cool. I don't know if I want to keep that or not. And the same thing here, I may want to add maybe some details. Uh, maybe in this area. So I'll extrude inner here. 
and then extrude it regular. And now I just have these extra like little details right there. Extrude it in again right here. It's kind of neat. Now keep in mind it's mirrored, so it'll be the same thing on the other side, but it won't be like on this side. It'll just be like that piece and that piece. I don't think I want those, so I'm going to undo that. I don't want those. Okay, cool. All right, so that should take you through the first part of this. Um, think of it like you're, being, you're breaking it into sections. So one part is going to be the body. Um, that would include, like, if you had a bubble top or you had some other piece up there. If you had a camera, that could be included in the body, too. Um, I'll have another lecture that will go over the propeller part, which is going to be a lot of using the cloners. So just like um, this, we're going to create one propeller and clone it all the way around. And then we'll also move it into position and clone it all the way around or use symmetry all the way around so we have them on um, the other sides of this. I have to save it, then I can get back to the center one. Uh, scenes. And then eventually we'll end up with something like this. And now looking at this, I think maybe this part is a little bit too small. I don't know. I'll have to play with it more. I think this is too soft. That's what it is. It's just, that's too soft. I like that. I think that's neat. Maybe pointier, I think. That might be kind of cool to have that pointier. The file's loading, so that's why it's so blinky. There it is. So by the time you're done with this, um, it'll look something like that. Uh, I'm grab everything and just drop everything on this one material. Oops, and somehow I moved my stuff. How did that happen? Subdivision ground. This is like right before we would take it into key shot. This is why it's going so slow, because there's literally millions of divisions on this. Come on. Yep. <laughs> well, I think you get the idea. You can see the propellers here. There's wires inside this as well. <clears throat> And this is why we wouldn't want to render it inside of cinema because cinema will go super slow for this kind of stuff. The key shot is like super quick, relatively speaking, super quick. Uh, it looks like it's going to crash because it's saving my stuff. So we'll just end the lecture there. <laughs> okay, so one part of this will be the body and then the rest of it, just think of it modular. I'm going to add the motor, I'm going to add the propeller, um, the wiring inside that we'll have in there too. We want to be able to see the propellers so that as they're spinning, obviously we can see something happen. Um, if they're covered, you can't see it. So it doesn't look like anything's happening in there. It's not as exciting. Um, these are the legs I use for this one, which is more of a standard. Uh, this is the one for I just did like that. Uh, but these legs are separate pieces. It's again, pretty much the same thing. It's just a matter of modeling out what you want those legs to look like. Uh, all drones have kind of a, um, a couple standard ideas or standard ways that they do their stuff. Right? So you can kind of pick how you want to do it or come up with your own idea. Um, like this one is a little bit notched in. Um, these ones are notched outward. right? So maybe as it lands, it's a little more cushion going this way. If you had a camera on here, all the stuff that's underneath, obviously that would add to uh, making it look more realistic um, in those spots. There's some in here. There we go. Uh, we'll get to this too when we do the, our other stuff, but some of these blades will have like blade guards. If you're not aware of it, drones, they spin so fast they could actually like sever a finger. Uh, so having a blade guard on there is um, helpful for that kind of thing. Obviously there's different sizes of the drones, <coughs> um, different cage configurations, different ways things are set up, different things like this. You know, it's still a drone, it still works, it has the propellers on it, it has the base, it has all that. 
Uh, just a matter of how you're setting up those initial, what the body is going to look like. In this one, the body's more blocky than round, right? So again, just go through and just trying to figure out uh, how you want this to be set up. Just play with it. That's what the biggest thing is going to be. Yeah, this one has a bubble on there with the camera inside. I don't know, maybe those are lights on it. That's kind of cool. Awesome. All right, so I'll end the lecture there. Any questions on that yet? No? Mm -hmm. We can do them two different ways. So one way would be we would model, a, we would basically model a dimple in it, and then we would build a light and just drop it in. And then when we get to key shot, um, you can drop and say, this is a light, and it'll use it as a light that would light up. Okay. Um, or if you just wanted, uh, let's say you wanted to have a beam that would go across, and that would be like a lighting up thing, kind of like just so you can see it in the sky. Um, you could do it as a texture, or just like have it bright red or something, and then key shot, same thing. We would drop that on there to say this is an illuminating item. Cool, anything else? All right.